How's it going? Jake with Bond Performance here. Uh, just a quick video. Uh, I've got my OEM pan that I added a AN drain to. And I'm going to show you guys this, the process changing the fill on this 6L80 on my 2011 Suburban. As I mentioned in the previous video, now let me spin the camera around. As I mentioned in the previous video, these factory pans don't have a drain. Um, and just to save some time, this pan was only 18 bucks. I figured I would just go ahead and sacrifice the old one, just drill a hole at the lowest point, let it drain while I'm getting all my stuff ready. And that way there's no extensive cleaning. This, uh, this pan was brand new for 18 bucks. So, it's no fun trying to weld a dirty surface. Skipped all that by starting with a brand new one. I'll have a drain on there for next time. Make this process easier. I've got an OEM gasket and an OEM filter to go on here. And this truck does have the tow package. So I'm not gonna be able to get you a shot of it, but it's got a trans cooler up front. So this will be draining for quite a while. For the refill process, I've got a garden sprayer. I'm gonna try out as an oil bowser. Got a piece of 516 spray line on here. And my Amsoil KTF. Ready to go in there. So yeah, let me finish letting this drain and then pop this stock pan off toss the filter and uh, see how it looks in there. Hopefully it doesn't have too much on the magnets, but that's one thing we're gonna have to remember to do is transfer the factory magnets from that pan to this one before it goes in. And like I said, discard the old filter, throw a new one in with uh, a new seal on it as well. There's the OEM hand gasket there. with its seal as well all right so pans drained the hardware is out but there's just not quite enough clearance to get the pan free from crossover pipe and the internals of the trans so my game plan here is going to be to loosen up these two trans mount studs and jack the entire drive line slightly to gain clearance between the crossover pipe and the pan and get that pan swapped out. All right, so that was a real pain. As you can see, I had to jack the drive line components pretty far up off this cross member to gain enough clearance to clear this crossover pipe. Now, another option would be to disconnect the crossover pipe. Then I would need new gaskets for these flanges at the manifolds. And if you've ever dealt with uh, heat cycled parts, you'll agree that that can be a uh, uh, you know, dangerous task as far as hardware goes. This thing's always lived its uh, 10 years or however old it is, uh, 11 years now, I guess, in the south. So it's not as bad as some of the northern trucks that you guys might be working on. But nevertheless, I don't feel like breaking hardware and opening up a whole nother can of worms. So I'm glad I was able to gain clearance this way. Um, while we're in here, that trans mount looks good but that's something else you guys might want to keep an eye on. Uh, actually, it's got a crack in it, so. I guess that's just, uh, it's too 
two parts. But anyway, just be mindful of your surroundings while you're under here. Obviously be careful lifting anything by an aluminum case. Uh, if you're doing this with a floor jack, definitely put a block of wood on it. This uh, stabilizer jack's got a rubber coating to help protect it. And obviously just go real nice and easy. If you stop seeing a move here, stop pushing. Uh, that's when stuff breaks. So everything looks fine under here. I'm gonna throw the new trans filter on and try and wiggle my new pan in there without taking too much of the paint off of it. Um, I'm not really well vested on automatic transmissions, but uh, the valve bodies and everything in here, some of this appears to be plastic, so you obviously need to be very careful with that. And of course, don't forget your new gasket, which I've got over here. So I'm gonna grab that and get going on the reinstallation. Now that I've got the pan on and slug down, I'm going to do a torque sequence at 80 inch pounds. Alright, I recruited my helper. The initial fill is six quarts, which won't quite fit in this sprayer, so I'll have to top it off. But the oil bowser is working good. You need to go in pretty slow with this so it doesn't overflow. So this is about perfect pace. And obviously if it overflows, if it starts to, you just let off the trigger. It'll make a huge mess so once we've got this all filled up we're gonna start the truck and let it warm up and then cycle it three to five seconds in every gear neutral you know first reverse all that and then once it's up to operating temperature we'll add another I'll I'll post a photo but it should be 6.7 additional quarts for a total of 12.7, but like I said, I'll post that just after this, and then check for leaks, and that should be about it. All right, so we're letting it idle. Got the air conditioning on in here, so I've got exhaust aimed outside. Once it gets up to About 120 degrees on our trans temp. We'll uh, add another 6.7 quarts. All right, so we're just gonna give it a few seconds in each gear. that fluid circulate all right so that's a wrap test drive went good um, I didn't end up using as much fluid as anticipated I had two and a half gallons and I've got about a gallon left so um, Two gallons would be enough in this case, but the results may vary depending on uh, how much fluid you get out of the trans cooler. I suspect if the vehicle was warm when I started, I would have got more out, but uh, that's give or take because you know nobody likes to work on hot parts. So subscribe if you haven't, comment below if this helped you out. If you've got complaints, comments, concerns, and I'll see you guys next time.